Welcome folks, one and all, to Let's Play Discworld 2 Missing Presumed, developed by Perfect Entertainment and published by Psychnosis in 1996. Discworld 2 is the sequel to Discworld, both of which take place in the strange and peculiar world of Discworld, created by Terry Pratchett. In this game, much like the first, you take on the role of Rincewind, the heroic non-hero who despises heroics because they always get messy and problematic and he has to run away from everything. The introductory cutscene to this game doesn't reveal too much about what's going on, but the bit just straight into the beginning of gameplay will reveal a lot more. This game has an odd starting resolution, 640x480, which when I thought about it wasn't actually that odd for the time. Of course, for the purposes of recording, it's not very good at all, so I've beefed it up to uh, 1024 by 768 I've also added in the subtitles, which of course means that you'll be able to read the dialogue as well as hear it. I'm not going to uh, talk too much more about the game here, except the fact that it's a lot nicer and prettier than the first game, and the puzzles, ooh. Rincewind's got a few things to say about the puzzles, and so will I when I get to them. So without further ado, let's dive right into the world of Missing Presumed. You've already seen some of the introductory cutscenes, so we're going to skip them. Like this one. And we've already seen the next one as well. And when I press escape again, we'll get into the actual gameplay proper. Here we go! And it's a party! With a corpse. And yet not a corpse. <laughs> Colleagues, gentlemen, and fellow wizards. Hello! Here's looking at your bottom. Yay! Up your eye. Huh. Pull the other one. It's got strange knobbly bits on All right. it. Happy Hogwatch Day. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, uh, colleagues, we are gathered here today for the final departure party of our dear, soon-to-be-departed comrade, the wizard, Windle Poon. Not Windle! Good old Windle, don't forget to go strike. Oh dear. Three, two, one, zero! And he's dead. Oh well. What? Nothing. That's it. I hope. Right, everybody. Our funeral at two thirty. Okay. Then drinks and ham rolls in the main hall at three. Or he's not dead. Hey, uh, what's happening? Call this service, do you? I'm dead. I you am. are. I demand to be taken away to a better life, as per contract. Oi. Things were different in my day. Were they? You died properly. Not like the deaths you get nowadays. Uh, he, 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 he says he's not dead. Yep. I am dead, but I'm still bloody ambulatory. No, you're not. You're fooling no one but yourself, you know. Mm, well, he, he looks dead. <laughs> Smells dead, of course. He always did, no? yeah. And I suppose my word doesn't count for anything around here. Nope. I can't be dead if I'm still talking, now can I? Look, old chap, it's our considered professional view that you are an extinct wizard. Yep. Your opinion doesn't count because you're dead. Oh, yeah, good point. Yeah. Well, I suppose I'll just sit here then, shall I? Yep. I suppose it takes a while. So, um, how is death, um, actually? See any, um, white lights, you know, tunnels, girls with hearts? Oh, yes, please. I'll take two. No. Uh, if this is heaven, I wish I'd done wicked things when I was alive. <laughs> What's happening to me? Uh, well, it, it seems that your body's dead, but your soul's still in... Well, in, in residence. Oh. Well, I'm not hanging about here for the rest of my afterlife. I've had hard life, Arts Chancellor. I'm entitled to a bit of paradise. Yeah. I've read about it. Young women and wine and whatnot. 
Look, your life's over. You're not supposed to moan about it. And definitely not supposed to contemplate any... any... Uh, what not. Uh, who's responsible for Who do you think? This? Where's death, then? This is outrageous. Yep. You, you, you can't have a soul hanging about a deceased body like that. Why not? It's unhygienic. It is. Yeah. There's, there's food laid out. We can't have him near the nibbles. The health inspectors will be on to us. They will. Yes, yes, good point. Now compose yourself, Windle. You can't decompose here. I shall have to ask you to move along. Oh, come to supper when a man can't even drop stone dead in peace. Eternal rest, eternal rest, is it? Well, I'm not going to take this line down. I'm off to find myself a nice shallow grave. And off you go, Windle. So, death is in fact gone. I hope it's not linked to that event that happened in the introduction. That would be awkward. Well, clearly we'll never see Windle Poons again. We're gonna see Windle Poons again, people, don't worry. Where are we in all this anyway? There's been too much of this sort of thing lately. Rincewind? Rincewind! Ah, oh, there I am, in the sausage and mash. Ah, Rincewind. There you are. Now, as you're aware, there have been some very odd goings-on in this city of late. They have. I am referring, of course, to the sudden disappearance of death. Yep, he's gone. What? No one's dying? Oh, they're dying, but their souls aren't being taken away. They're dead and alive at the same time. Awkward. And now it's happened to poor Windle. Death's gone. Oh dear. And we need to summon him back. So, uh, here you go. We need to perform the rites of Ask Ed. A fetch quest. I suppose you have a list of mysterious ingredients that I now have to run off and collect. Yep. What? How did you know that? I just had a dreadful suspicion. Ha. <laughs> All right, so what have we got to find? Well, it, it's a rush job, so just the bare minimums will okay. do. Okay. We need three equal-sized sticks of wood and four cc's of mouse's blood. It shouldn't take you more than a few Really? Minutes. Expect anyone? Yeah. Um, what is it now? Let's just say that uh, we needed more than the bare minimums. And not to say that I'm questioning your judgment. He is. I'm just uh, planning for the future, is all. Well, the rest is all just flash and style. Yep. This is a death rite, after it all. It is. You know the routines. A bit of sparkle and glitter in the air, vile Charles stench erupting from the tomb, and lovely dribbly candles. That sort of okay. thing. Okay. None of which we'll need at all. Indeed. That's right. Just the wood and the mouse's blood. There never seems to be any way of getting a decent moment's rest around this place. Well, off you go, Rincewind. The game awaits. The game awaits. One. The right stuff. Also, I'm very glad that the sound didn't go crackly at any point during that introductory cutscene. Because I originally loaded this up, got it all to this point, and then halfway through that, the dialogue started to crackle up. I've actually tracked down the official Discworld 2 patch for DOS mode and applied that, so that's why the sound's a lot better. So, let's save. Again, just like the other game, it's F1 for saving. So, uh... Let's save. We do have luggage with us now. Luggage wasn't there in the introductory cutscene, but he is there. That leads to the high energy facility. It's right click to examine and left click to do. That leads to the university gardens. And the dining hall. That leads to the dining room. Let's go there first, because we've just left. Why not come back? There is food after all. Hello, luggage. How you doing? And the CD needs to load some dialogue. Don't you find something strangely soothing about an ambulatory box which can consume 50 times its own mass in food, clothing, and furniture? Actually, no. It scares the willies out of me, too. <laughs> yeah. Hello, Ritzwind. It's me. It was me five minutes ago. And it'll still be me the next time you look, too. The only items we start with in the game are the rights, which we've already been told about, and our money pouch. My money pouch. Overflowing with a fast wealth of gold coins. Really? Well, when I say overflowing, more of a slow trickle. Yeah. Really. And vast wealth is a purely subjective phrase. And when I say gold, more gold-ish 
and gold on it. Yeah. Oh, all right. I have a few copper coins. Are you satisfied now? Never. <laughs> we do have food, though. Food? Well, I say food. It is vaguely organic and probably mm. could be placed inside the mouth in times of emergency. Yeah, considering the Enter University, chance of it being actual food, meh. Can we take it? I would try and scoop it up, but without something to put it in, I would just make a mess. No, oh, you put it in luggage, I guess. There's a coffin, too. I wonder why they always make coffins so sturdy. I mean, who do they think is going to break out? Perhaps Windle? Yeah, sure. So they let me spend the game holed up in a coffin. Yeah, good point. You've got too much to do, like the plot. The Arch Chancellor, my imperious leader, who thinks shouting is the same as intelligence. Before they made him, they broke the mold. What a sight to stir confidence. Well, possibly not confidence, but it certainly stirs something. Let's have a talk with him. We've got loads of things we can talk to him about. For a good conversation starter. Yep. For when everything else fails, why not try a little sarcasm? Indeed. And then there's also... For a personal reflection. And... For asking about a vile stench. We shall talk to him. Um... You're sure you really want me to do this job, then? Yep. I mean, there's uh, no one you'd rather... Rather what? Lumber with all these hours and hours of pointless activity. Yeah. Hmm, well, now, let, let me just consider the alternative. Okay. Um, no. No, you're the bunny, I'm afraid. You know, when I get older, I want a job where I just sit drinking milky tea all day, too. If you don't get me those three wooden sticks and that mouse's blood, okay. I'll... Understand? Ooh, nasty. Uh, right you are, then. We'll never find out what that threat actually was. Are you sure there's no one else's life you'd like to ruin? At the moment, I'm content to merely ruin the life of Assistant Wizard Rincewind. I suppose if pushed, I could try ruining the life of Gardener's Assistant Rincewind. Assistant Street Sweeper Rincewind. Actually, I feel a certain yearning to really come down like a ton of rectangular building things upon a sewerage systems blockage removal technician, Rincewind. Hmm. So, uh, that was three sticks, a uh, mouse's blood, glitter, stench, and candles. Right, back in a tick. Or maybe a jiffy. Yeah. Let's also have a personal reflection on our good old-fashioned boss, the Arch-Chancellor. Right, so, now it begins. The Great Quest. Ah, I can see it all now. Wandering locations, searching for obscure items, mm. staring at objects, wondering what horrible manipulations I have to go through just to secure the most mundane pieces of junk. Can't even go to the lavatory without negotiation with three dwarves and a manically depressed troll for the toilet paper. Yep. It's not even as if life has a high score table at the end. <sighs> Still, could be worse, I suppose. Yeah. I might have paid for the privilege. <laughs> Bit of a stab at us there, I think, there. Well, there's nothing more to talk to him about except the various items we can get. You have little animations. But we shall wave goodbye to the Chancellor. Sorry, can't stay and chat all day. Must be off. And that's it for the first video. When we come back, folks, we have a quest. And that quest involves... Questing! Unfortunately, we can't do questing just in the Unseen University. We have to actually step out into the world beyond. So, I'll catch you guys later. And when we come back, we'll probably have to go and find three sticks, some mouse blood, some dribbly candles, a stench, and some glitter. Why they don't just have this stuff lying around in the Unseen University, I don't know. But I suppose if they did, there wouldn't be much of a chapter one, would there? I'll catch you later. See you then. Later.